that you you have faith in me and and uh, in our teaching, we maybe can learn something tonight. Our study tonight is going to be something that that we. Um, I want you to think on on the lines with me about, and it's, my title is "How Strong Is Your Faith?" What is faith? Anybody know what faith is? What does the Bible say? What faith is? Hebrews eleven and one. Levi, what does Hebrews eleven and one say? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The English Standard Version says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. So faith is something that, as Wayne mentioned in his lesson, I'm glad Wayne sort of talked about that, the love of God. Faith is understanding that God's there. Faith is understanding that that, that love that we show toward this invisible being, if you want to think of it in those terms, is, is what we are here for. It's what we come to, to church for. It's why we worship. It's the faith that we have. Because our hope, what is our hope? What is our hope? Go to heaven. I mean, I'll live eternally. The Bible tells us. And, and we know we, that the, what the Bible tells us is we're going to live eternally. We're a spiritual being. We're made in the image of God. So we're going to live forever. And there's one place I want, I want to live. When I die, I want to go to heaven. I don't want to live where the devil is. So that's our hope. That's what the hope is. And this evidence is what I want to talk about tonight a little bit. How do we know there's a God? Look around. <laughs> Just look around. Look at your wife. Look at your children. Look at this world we live in. Look at why well, I was mentioned, as Wayne mentioned, love. Look at the feelings that we have. Where did that come from? That came from God. And we can, we can prove that by the Bible. As we go through the Bible, we can see that God loves us and He cares for us. The Greek word for faith is pista, meaning trust, confidence, fidelity. It's derived from the root word pathro, is to be persuaded. How are we persuaded? We're persuaded by what we see. We're persuaded by the evidence that we see. We no, and even if you're a non-believer, you came into existence, you have something in your, in your human body that makes you wonder and makes you feel and makes you think and makes you do things as a human being that you have no answer to. But we do have an answer. God is that answer. God created us. So we can, we can think about that from the, from the Bible standpoint. We can say, is the Bible trustworthy for us can we have faith in this scripture of course we can because it's from god god is the one that gives gives us this uh this bible that we read that we use this to persu- to follow this invisible being if you want to think of it in those terms faith is faith is the basis of all religion no matter what you believe i mean you can believe you can believe uh bozo the clowns god if you wanted to i guess you know, and think that, you know, we call it Bozonites, if you want to think of it in that, in that terminology. But you've got to have faith that Bozo can do something for you. You've got to have faith and understand that what you believe in is going to accomplish what you're after. Think about it. When you buy a product, it don't matter what you buy. You buy something, that, that material thing, you buy food or you buy something. What persuades you to buy that, that product? Anybody? How about advertisement? Right? We see it, we hear about it on the radio or the TV. We have that advertisement. The, the Bible here can be our advertisement, if you think of it in those terms. You hear about it from your family or your friends. How were you persuaded to become a Christian? Well, I was persuaded because I grew up in the church. My mom and dad persuaded me. And the majority of you are probably that way. Some of you may have, may have not have grown up in the church. You may have been brought into the church by a loving person that cared for you, and that persuasion caused you to, to be a member of the church. So you had faith in that. You had faith in that person. You had faith in what they were telling you was true. And that's the idea we're going to think on tonight a little bit. Uh, I read an interesting concept the other day that, that said faith 
is something we receive from God. We tend to, as human beings, we, we tend to think that our faith is how, how much we try to prove ourselves to God. And that's true. We should, how, as Wayne said, we should show love to God no matter what. We should want to do what God wants us to do. But does God have faith in us? He does. God has faith in His children. He wants us to do right. He wants us to, to do what we're supposed to do in, in this world by following His commands, by following the example that He sent, Jesus Christ. He said, uh, as, humans, we, uh, as humans, we tend to view faith from an upper, upward aspect. Well, I'm faithful to God. Well, you should be. But God's faithful to us. Think about it. Genesis 1.1. How, how do we know that God's faithful to us? What does Genesis 1.1 Genesis say? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. You're here because of God. You live in this world because of God. You have the air you breathe because of God. You have the water that you drink because of God. You have the food that you eat because of God. Everything, everything is based around the fact that God loves you and He cares for you and He has faith, faith in you that you will be His child. And so we can look at from that aspect that God is our creator. And because He's our creator, we would want to do what God wants us to do. So God has the faith in us. He wants us to be faithful. He wants us to do what's right. Genesis 6, 5 through 6, but the Lord said, in, in, in this reading, says, the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him in his heart. How does it feel when your children don't do right? How does it feel when they don't do what you, you, you command them to do? It hurts you. And God had lost faith in man. How do we know God lost faith? What does it say? He said he regretted that he made man. Oh, that's hurtful. It hurts me that God's lost faith in me. But yet, what happens? Genesis 6 and 8, it says, But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Ain't you thankful for all the faithful people that's in this world? That God still does everything that He does, not for just me, but for Levi and the poor soul out here in the world that's lost. For everybody. God still does it for that because He loves us. He loves us as His children. I want you to think on something here a little bit. A little bit. It's, I think it's interesting. In Joshua, uh, Joshua 6, um, what had happened here, of course, God had brought them out of the land of Egypt and brought them through the wilderness and take, took them to Mount Sinai and forgiven them the Ten Commandments and it had established the law through Moses. And Moses passed on. God took, took him on. But Moses never got to see the land of, of the promised land, the land of Canaan. God said he would give it to them, but it was going to take some effort, right, in order to... to to conquer those that lived in the land of Canaan, lived in that land of promise. And in Joshua 6, they did that. Joshua 6, they marched around the walls of what? Jericho. Jericho. Just all they had to do was march. <laughs> Just march around the walls. Once a day for how many days? Seven days, right? When they marched around that wall for seven days, what happened? The walls fell. Who made them walls fail? God did. God made them fall for them because he told them, I will be with you. And he did. But he gave them instructions and told them not to take anything from that destruction. The gold and the silver and anything that was material was to be given to the treasury of God, given to God, basically. And he called it the devoted things. That's what the word is used here. So, the latter part of chapter 6, sir, God says he was pleased in the way that they had, had done what they'd done, and he was proud of Joshua in the way that he was leading his people. But then we get into chapter 7. And in chapter uh, 
uh, 7 and 1, it says, But the people of Israel broke faith in regard to the devoted things. As, as I mentioned, the devoted things were the things that God told them not to get, not to have anything to do with. He says, For Achan, the son of Kamai, son of Abdi, son of Jerah, of the tribe of Judah, took some of the devoted things, and the anger of the Lord burnt, burned against the people of Israel. So Joshua sent them to Ai, and the people of Israel were defeated. Why were they defeated? Because God let them be defeated. He didn't intervene for them. And so they, 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 what few people, the spies had been sent to go into and spy out this land, the city of Ai, and the spies went and they came back and said, oh, there ain't that many folks over there. We can just go with just a few. Could, could God have defeated them with just a few? Yes, he could have. But when God's not with you, what happens? <laughs> we get defeated. And that's what happened here. They got defeated. But what I'm more interested in is what Joshua then said. Joshua 7, 6 through 9. He says, Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell to the earth on his face before the ark of the Lord until the evening. He and the elders of Israel... And they put dust on their heads, and Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, why have you brought this people over the Jordan at all to give into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us? What that we would have been content to dwell beyond the Jordan? O Lord, what can I say when Israel has turned their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land will hear of it and surround us and cut off our name from the earth. And what will you do for your great name? This is probably, in my mind, one of the most irrespectful irrespect, prayers I've ever heard somebody say. Joshua has fell on his... He, 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 at least he did fall in front of God, as Wayne mentioned. But what did he say? What, what did Joshua do? He blamed God. Blame God for them being defeated. And he, he says to him, he tells him, he says, God, what are you going to do now about it? Your name is not going to be that great. That's a slap in the face. To somebody, for somebody to tell you that you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. God, has God ever failed man? He hasn't. You go back and like I said, we go back to Genesis 1. We see that the Bible itself, creation itself, shows it that God loves us. We see it every day. And we can feel it every day. But here Joshua is blaming God for their defeat. That's exactly where I was going, Levi, because what did God tell him? He tells him right then, he says, let's go on down and read that, read that part of that, uh, Brother Levi. Joshua 7, 10 through 12. Go ahead and read that, please. It's amazing that sometimes it says, therefore the people of Israel cannot stand before their enemies. They turn their backs before their enemies because they have become devoted for destruction. I will be with you no more unless you destroy the devoted things from among you. Who was responsible for the children of Israel? Who was the leader? Joshua. It was Joshua. And I love God's response. What did he say? Get up. Why did you come in here and fall on your knees and blame me for something that I didn't do? That's basically what he said, isn't it, Brother Levi? 
Levi fell, uh, Joshua fell on his knees, prayed to God and says, God, why did you let this happen? Why did you bring us into this land? Your name, can't, these people over here are going to hear about it and they're going to say, well, that God don't mean anything. <laughs> and God said, thumped him on the head like I do them boys every now and then. I have to get, boom, get their attention. Get up, Joshua. Get up from there. It's not me. He says, why have you fallen on your face? Israel has sinned. The people that you are the leader of, they have sinned. They have transgressed my covenant that I commanded them. God brought, the, brought it to, to Joshua in, in basically the way it should have been brought. Like, Don't blame me for something that I give you. I told you what to do. I give you the commandment. I could have given you AI, but no, you didn't, you didn't. You didn't do it right. You didn't do what I said. All because of what? One man's sin, right? One man's sin. Was it Joshua's responsibility? Of course it was. And that's the reason I think the Lord says, uses that word, get up. Get up off your knees. Don't you come in here and blame me for something that I had nothing to do with. You are responsible, Joshua. You are responsible for what happened to Ai. My faith was in you, and you let me down. I didn't let you down. You let me down. So get up off your knees and think about it. Have we ever thought about that? How many times, how many times have we, something hadn't went our way, and first thing we do is try to blame God for it? First thing. The problem may be just what we're doing, to be honest. I think so too, Levi, because, like I said from the beginning, God gives us everything. God is faithful to us. God shows us every day how much he loves us. And going back to Wayne's devotion, that, that, what's the two greatest commandments? What's the first one? You love God with all your heart. Love God with all your heart. Show him that you are his son, that you are his child. And by being a child of God means that you're going to love him and you're going to do what he says. But in this particular case, God lost faith in, in, in Joshua. But it didn't take him a minute to straighten it out. <laughs> he told him, said, get up, Joshua, get up. you got to deal with this. You go deal with it. And as we read the rest of it, Joshua did deal with it. Sometimes, sometimes it, it takes a little bit of uh, thumping on the noggin or slapping somebody upside the head to get their attention when it comes to dealing with God. You know, I, I, we're, we all were human beings to begin with. We're living in a world that's a sinful world. And when we do things that's not right, then we need to be called upon it. Well, well, well don't call me upon Wait a minute now. We can't, we can't blame God for something that we... We've done wrong. God is faithful to us. He's always has been. Our faith is in no comparison to God. I hope we, our faith is stronger each and every day. Uh, the trust that we have in God should be the trust and fidelity that He expects. I mean, we think about what God has given us. He gives us everything. And he's expecting that same type from us. Why did he send his son to, the, to this earth? To be what? To be a, our example. I mean, well, of course, we're not God, right? But we're, we are human, but he is our example. It is our goal to strive to be like Christ and to strive and be like the Son of God so we can be called those sons of God, children of God. And the only way we can do that is by, by being faithful to it. To love this invisible God, if you want to think about it from that aspect. I mean, you know, when, sometimes I, the older I get, the more and more I get thinking about the other side. <laughs> if you want to think about that. I hope to be able to be 100 years old. I, I said that last time I, I, I spoke on Wednesday night. But it's not up to me. It's up when God gets ready for me. So it's up to me to be ready whenever that time comes, and to be faithful toward God, and to show Him that I want to be with God forever. 
I want to be his child. But anyway, our faith don't compare to God's faith. Jesus in Matthew 21 cursed a fig tree because it had no fruit. And his disciples marveled. And in Matthew 21, 21 through 22, Jesus answers them and he says, Truly I say to you, if, I have, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what has been done to this fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into to the sea, it will happen. And whatever you ask in prayer, you will, you will receive. If you have faith, if you have faith. Can we move mountains? Think about it. Can man move a mountain? We do. We do through the machinery that we built that God has allowed us to build. You think about some of those aspects, but God, He's not talking about that. He's talking about your faith. Now, maybe, maybe the person that invented the bulldozer may have had faith and said, I, I, I'm, I'm going to build this bulldozer. This mountain's in the way. It's got to go. Maybe that's the reason he built the bulldozer to begin with. Who knows? But the thing about it is whatever we do in life, We've got to do it with the type of faith that, he, that Jesus tell, tell, tells his disciples here. They saw this big tree, and I'm sure it was a beautiful tree. Probably a beautiful tree there, but Jesus went up to it and there was no fruit on it. And Jesus said, curse, tree, you're cursed. And they came back by and what had happened to the tree? It had withered, it had died. I can imagine that was probably just a short period of time. I mean, could you see a see a, a, a plant that's all green and beautiful and everything, and, and then all of a sudden just, just dry up just because someone told it that you're a cursed tree? Oh, yeah. They wouldn't prefer it. Exactly, exactly. But, but his disciples marveled that he could do that. You know, he, they were marveled at that. But Jesus took that lesson that he did and says, listen, if, you, if I can do this, you can too. Could they? Ah, well, you know, Roundup kill a whole bunch of stuff. That was old, old boy Alabama decided to kill all them trees in Auburn with some spray, and he did it. <laughs> so we can do whatever we put our minds to, but we've got to do it with faith. And that's what he's telling these disciples is, listen, you have faith in me. I am the Son of God. I cursed this tree to show you an example, as Wayne Rain mentioned. And if I say, tell this mountain over here to get out of the way, guess what's going to happen? That mountain's going to move. Mark 4, 39 through 40. And here they were out on the sea, right? And this storm come up, and they, oh, they got to hollering and screaming and going, man, we're going to live, we're going to die, we're going to die. I've been in some rough seas, <laughs> some pretty rough seas. Uh, one night we was off the coast of Australia down and way around down Tasmania, and, it, and that sea down there is, is extremely rough. Uh, some of the roughest seas on, on this planet is this, the sea in, in, in the south around Australia and Tasmania and the North Sea, which is up around uh, England and up in that way, that, that area. Very rough, rough uh, seas because of the current, because of the wind. But I've been in seas where we go over one wave and go through the next. Over one wave and through the next. And we'd come up out, when we go over one, the ship would go over the wave and it would crest. And as it bent over, the prop would come up out of the water and go, whop, 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 whop. You're on a ship that's 300 feet long and a prop that's pushing that. What do you think that ship does when it comes, that prop comes out of the water? It shakes like an earthquake. That's how rough it was. I've been in some seas so rough I had to pry myself in between two lockers to get help keep from getting washed away. So I'm, I'm and I've been, I've been scared <laughs> before out there because I didn't want to get washed off in the sea. And so these, these disciples were in the same scenario. They were afraid. And what does Jesus tell them? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so afraid? 
Have you still no faith? What was the faith in? Who should their faith have been in? Should have been with Jesus. Jesus wasn't going to let them die out on this boat. Who caused the storm, you think, Levi? May have been, who caused the storm to come up on him? You reckon the old devil caused that? He very well could have. He could have, he could have sent his mind, let's, let's go over here and mess with Jesus and his disciples a little bit. We have storms all the time in our lives, all the time. And we can't let that make our faith weak. We've got to stand up with God. We've got to be with God. Call on God, as, as, as they did here. I mean, there comes a point where we, we know we can't do, do anything about it. So we need to call on God and ask God, say, God, please help us. We're fixing to die. And he did. Our belief in God is what makes us strong. The Bible tells us God is not slack in what he has promised. 2 Peter 3 and 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God wants us to all be saved. And He wants us all to be faithful to Him. And for us to be faithful to Him means we've got to do what He says. We've got to understand this Bible. And we've got to study this Bible. Study His Word. And on top of that, we've got to act like His children. We've got to do things that He expects out of us. God has been and will always be faithful to us. Always. You think about it from, from the aspect of no matter what you've done in your life, no matter what you've done, that God's with you. Even to the vilest sinner. Think about Paul, Levi. Think about Paul and what he did. And, and Paul mentions that, that he, he says he didn't do anything that he didn't regret. Why? Because he thought he was doing right in everything he did. But yet he found out he wasn't doing right. And he dedicated himself to doing right. You know, we can, we can think we're doing right, but when we find the truth and we see the truth and the truth is pointed out to us, what do you do? We need to, to, to change and do what God wants us to do. Do what he says. Because God's not slack in concern this promises. God says that I, this earth will be destroyed one of these days. And because of that, God wants all men to come to repentance. Is there a hell? I believe there's a hell. Because why? Because God said there is. And God said He's going to put all of the ones, the goats, the ones that don't do what He said there. And I don't want to go there. Because God loves us and He cares for us. He has faith in us. Faith in us. James 2 and 17 through 18 says... Uh, so also faith by itself, it, 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 if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. How do we show people that we're Christians? How do we show people we're children of God? You've got to let God be seen in you. You've got to say, hey, I'm a child of God. And when people see that, they can believe that. Remember we going back to the beginning of the, of, the, of the lesson, I talked about how do you convince somebody of this invisible God that we believe in? You've got to show them. This product that we sell, which is Christianity, came from God. God invented it. <laughs> he invented this product we're selling. It's our job to sell it. We've got to convince people that what I do, what we do as Christians, is what they need to be doing. And that's what it's this faith that James is talking about. You show me your words. People say, well, I believe in God, but they'll never do nothing. Well, wait a minute. You say to me you believe in God, but you don't want to be involved in, in fellowship. You don't want to be involved in benevolence. You don't want to come to church. You don't want to be baptized. You want to take the Lord's Supper. You don't want to sing? You don't want to help the needy? That's the works that God's talking about there. Matthew talks about that. that Jesus talks about when he, he goes to him, he talks about separating the sheep and goats. He says, you know, you never 
give me anything to drink. You never give me any food. You never came and visited me. That's the words. We, we, we have to show people that we are his children so God can have faith in us. Romans 1, 16-17, Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed, check this out, from faith for faith. As it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. God's faith is shown to us through his word. God's faith is shown to us through his creation. God's faith is shown to us through his son. He wants every man, everybody to be saved. It's our job to do that, to show our faith toward God. God's done showed us his faith in us. And we want to be faithful to him. And by being faithful to him, then we know we can, we can do exactly what he says. Right? The righteous shall live by faith. God wants us to do what's right. God has shown us his faith toward us by his creation, his word, his commandments, and his reward. What is the reward we have today in this physical life? <laughs> he gives us everything we need to be sustained. Everything. I mean, I, we, do we need this building to have, a, have a, a church service? No, but I'm thankful we do. Are you thankful to the medical profession when somebody has a sickness and they overcome it? I'm thankful that we do. I'm thankful that we got a car to drive in. God allowed man to, to come up with these inventions. I'm thankful that we have that. I can, you know, it wouldn't t if I left the house this, this morning, I might get here by church time. <laughs> or if I even had a mule or a wagon, it'd probably take me, I'd probably get here a little bit quicker. A mule would be give out, but I'd get here. I could, at least I could ride in comfort in the wagon. But now, we, with this inventions of automobiles and what we have today, oh man, we ride here, we ride here in air conditioned cars, TV screens, even the GPS tells us where to go. Are you thankful for that? We should be. God gives us everything. That reward is what he shows to us. But how strong is our faith towards God? Do we do what he says? Are you a Christian? Are you living the way you should? Are you doing what God expects out of us? Are you faithful to the attendance? Are you involved in programs that we have here at 6th Avenue? Do you care for your neighbor? Do you talk to your neighbor about God, about uh, God's love for them just as much as he loves us? Do you show them that? We've got to do those things so God can have that faith in us. God can truly say to us, if we're that way, that I'm one of his. We want to always be faithful to God. Got, quick, got done a little quicker than what I wanted to, but uh, any, any comments anybody want to make? We still got a few minutes for the, for the bottom of the hour. No comment? Surely there's somebody made a comment out there.
His faith was tested that day. Very much so. I mean, and it's it's that way in anything we do, isn't it, Levi? I mean, he, he accomplished going over, moving the mountain, didn't he? Think about it from that that aspect. His job was to do do exactly what you said: push that, make that first push over that mountain and go off down there. It took faith, didn't he? What did he have faith in? I'm sure he had faith in God too a little bit. And so we get, he probably said a prayer before he hit that go button on that dozer. Straight up and down, yeah, yeah. That's got to be scary. But yet he had faith in God and he had faith in that machine, that that machine would, would, would keep him safe. It's the same thing. I mean, we, the idea of faith is just like we, we go about, good example, Levi, talking about him going over the mountain. That faith that we have in anything that we do is we've got to come with, come with it within ourselves. And to think that, that that trust, as I mentioned in the beginning of it, the lesson, that the word means to have trust, to have confidence, to have fidelity, to have confidence in, in, in what you're doing. Uh, we mentioned about automobiles. We have trust in our automobiles uh, that we can get from point A to point B. We have faith in that product. We should have the same type of faith in God. If God says... That if we do what he says, we're going to have a, uh, live with him forever in heaven. What's going to happen? We're going to live with God forever in heaven. And have that faith. And we go back to Hebrews, Hebrews 11 and 1. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We can't see God, as Wayne mentioned. We can't see heaven. But you know what? I know it's there. Just as I know you know it's there. Any other comments? Well, guys, I appreciate your comments. We'll, uh, we'll go ahead and end with a word of prayer and we'll be dismissed. Our Father in heaven, we're so thankful for today and all the many blessings that you give us each and every day. Father, we're thankful for thy love, mercy, and kindness that you show to us. Father, we ask that you help us to always be faithful, Father. Help us to always do what you command us. And Father, help us always be a guiding light to those that are in need. Father, help us always appreciate the things that you give us each and every day. Father, we ask that you help us to make our faith stronger. And Father, by being strong in the faith, we can lead others to thee. Father, we ask that you go on through this night with us. Be with us as we drive home safely. Be with all that need our prayers. We ask that you be with Brother Roscoe Thornton's family, Father, in his death. Father, we ask that you go on through the night with us and forgive us of any wrong. Help us to always do right. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.